With me today is Enzo Raimondo from the Real Estate Institute of Victoria. Hello. Greville Pebs from WBP Property Group. Hi. And Melissa Opie from Keyhole Property Investments, also known as the Property Lady. Hello. Today we're talking about location. Location, location, location. A good property location can make or break a property deal. Enzo, how do you know what a good location is? Well, generally, you, you need to do your research and, um, and then go to an expert. So, but to, to inform yourself about what's happening in the marketplace, uh, the RAIB collects all the auction and private sales results and we publish them in the, in the Age and the Herald Sun each weekend. And if you're tech savvy, you can actually log on and get them on Saturday night and, mm. and know what's happened in the, in the market that day. But generally, um, that will give you an idea of what's happening in each suburb. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll show where, where prices are moving up, where they're moving down, where they're staying stable. Right. And that's always a, a basic indicator of what's happening in the marketplace. I think a good location is a location that actually offers diversibility for people. What I mean by that is that if someone's purchasing as an investor, I seriously won't buy a property for one of my clients if their tenant has to walk more than 12 minutes to buy a cafe latte or a glass of wine because most people today are either time poor or really lazy and a good location for an owner occupier really depends upon their own lifestyle if they have family commitment if they have young little ones that they wish to reside in that property for some time they need to look at infrastructure in place such as good quality schools public transport so it really depends on what hat I'm buying whether or not I'm actually purchasing for an owner occupier or for someone as an investor and they're looking for wealth creation Grover, what, what do you think makes a good location? I echo Melissa's comments. Um, I like to see it as a, the village. Is, you know, the village is a very important, particularly in Melbourne. And if you look at, say, Carlton, you know, Ligon Street or proximity to Warman Road in Elwood um, or Fitzroy Street, St Kilda, it's all about the walking distance to those amenities, um, the lifestyle, the transport. But you want to be, be close to some of those things, but you don't want to be right on them. So, for example, you don't want to be too close to a school. Right? You, don't want to, you, you don't want to have all the, you know, the mums and dads are picking up and they're dropping off, yeah. so there's congestion. But after school finishes, then there's all the dance lessons and there's the karate lessons and that sort of thing. So um, whilst it's important to be with walking distance, you don't want to be too close to you. And the same goes with, um, with, with a train station or you know, being on a bus route. Um, you don't want to be affected by the noise pollution that brings, but you want to be uh, close enough that that's great amenity to, to be able to walk to and, and get access to. That's right, and also too with so many inner city properties now, they're actually only having perhaps only two people residing in that. And I think that long gone are the days that a lot of people actually entertain at home and have a dinner party. I don't know when the last time was that everyone here actually had a dinner party. So the restaurants are actually becoming an extension of our own dining room at home. Yeah. But you are talking about mainly inner city properties. We all yes, already not, know they're good locations. That's right. Yeah. However, not in the city itself, but somewhere mm. between 2 to 12k radius. Yeah. But, but not necessarily. You, you really do have to be careful mm. even in inner city locations. So, for example, in Richmond, you really don't want to buy south of Swan, uh, Swan Street because, you know, you've got a noise, freeway noise down that end. You've got more industrial down there, which mm. is interspersed with the residential. So you need to be very careful... Um, the boundaries of, of where you where, where people buy, um, and if you, if you say within Richmond, another example, you don't really want to be too far north of Bridge Road um, because you've got a lot of one-way streets, you've got a lot of um, housing commission, and the closer up north you get to Victoria Street, you've got uh, more car parking problems. Um, so, even in the inner city, there are issues that you know, investors mm. and, and home buyers need to be aware that, of. That's right, isn't it, Enzo? You can have um, a good block, but you can have bad apartments in that block and good apartments in that block. Well, there's an old saying, you buy the worst house in the best street. Uh, yeah. That's probably uh, still uh, holds true today. Uh, really, um, location is probably determined by your budget in any event. So yeah. if you have a, a, a good budget, you can buy in those areas where land is scarce and property values keep going up. But it's really important when you looking to buy whether you're an investor or an owner occupier what 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 you really you know the decision why you're buying that property if you're an owner occupier and you love for instance um, Brunswick or St Kilda uh, because that's where you want to live well then uh, you'll go buy there if you're an investor you'll want the long-term capital growth and um, 
they, different suburbs behave differently. Uh, it's not just generic across Melbourne where you have what, the one suburb going up 10%, another one going up exactly the same. It doesn't happen. It just, you know, they're, they're so different. Can I just jump in there? Yeah. I, I think uh, location, it, it's not just about the suburb. Uh, it, it, it really drills down to the actual street. It might sometimes be what side of the street or what end of the street. Mm. Um, so location's a lot of things and, and, and as you said before Karina it's about in, in a block there might be only um, in, in a block of 10 there might be only two um, units in that block that might be the type of property that we would recommend to clients to buy that, because they're going to perform better over time and that might be in, in an area where there's um, security concerns it could be in St Kilda or Paran um, you know, always a top floor might, is, a, is perhaps a better choice than, than a ground floor for security reasons and also for, for car noise. You don't want cars driving past or, or rubbish bins outside the side mm. of your ground floor unit. So mm. quite often those sort of um, characteristics in location, are, you know, they really drill down to that micro level. That's right. As a valuer though, Gravel, how do you... Um, someone doing their research, how do you distinguish between the top floor unit that sold for $10,000 more compared to the ground floor unit that, you know, sold for, you know, a lot less? How, how do you do that research? How do you know um, what the price, what, what premium you should put on that price? Well, it's, it's all based on Enzo's uh, sales records. We've got a, a whole um, database of, of sales going back you know, 20 years. Uh, that we have histories of sales in those particular blocks. So we can actually track the performance of individual units within that block and we can see that some units, even, even within the same block, can actually perform better than others. Mm. So we, we, have that, we have that historical data and, um, that we can use. So when a valuer is going out there, he can, he can do the research on that particular block. And as a buyer's advocate, we also use the same data. And one of the great things about it is that it actually shows us a floor plan and it also has photographs of the improvements, if any, yeah. that were in that particular unit in the first instance. So yeah. we're able to actually go and have a look at comparable properties that have just recently sold and also inferior and superior ones and just make a simple adjustment in terms of our methods of how we actually value the properties. Right. Melissa, what's some of your favourite locations in Melbourne? I really believe the western suburbs because in the past it was really known as the wild, wild west and it was also known just for the industry and you'd almost need a bodyguard to go there if you're going out the weekend. Whereas now times have seriously changed and areas such as Yarraville, Seddon, Footscray have become really fantastic locations to actually purchase in. Well, I'd say if, you, uh, if you're looking to just set out to buy in uh, in the western suburbs is probably a good start, especially around Altona. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they're starting to move now. If you're uh, um, you know bought before and you you want to move closer to the city, um, places like Hawthorne, Kew, Baldwin, uh, Canterbury, if you're really wealthy, mm -hmm. that they, they'll always go up. And Greville. Got a bit of a chuckle at the uh, the Wild West comment, but <laughs> it used to be all about the um, East versus West. Yep. Um, but now in Melbourne, it's about inner and outer. Mm. Uh, for me, certainly uh, my tips would be uh, uh, Elwood in the inner, inner south um, and in the inner east, areas like Paran. Thanks very much, everyone.